Well, praise the Lord, everybody, and you at home, praise the Lord to you. Hope you all had a great day today. Hope you all are staying safe. Amen. <clears throat> just want to read a quick, quick scripture, just one verse. This is Psalm 75, verse 1, just one verse. It says, we praise you, God. We praise you, for your name is near. People tell of your wonderful deeds. Let me sing that one, say that one more time. This is Psalm 75, and this is just verse 1. It says, we praise you, God. We praise you, for your name is near. People tell of your wonderful deeds. Let's pray. Father, we, we love you. We thank you, God. We honor you. We give you praise. Thank you for this day that you have given us, God. Thank you, God, for keeping us safe, God. This terrible virus, God, you have kept us, God. And we say thank you for it. Thank you for keeping all of our loved ones safe and our family, God. We just, we just give you praise. Father, it's time for the word, and we ask that you would have your way even in this service, God. Have your way, be with our pastor as he gives us the word today, God. Give him a word that will strengthen our hearts, God, and encourage us. Just make us better, God. We, we, we just love you for what's about to happen, even in this service, God, for what we're about to hear, God, for what what we're about to, to, to enjoy today, God. We, we give you praise for it, and we, we thank you for it. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Nobody like him, nobody like him, 
Jesus, 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 Jesus. He'll give you joy. He'll give you peace. He'll give you joy. He'll give you peace. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jehovah Jireh, Jesus, Jehovah Nisi, Jesus, 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 put your hands together. We call on the name of Jesus, that name that saves, that name that heals. There's power in that name. There's healing. Whatever you need is in that name. And we love that name. Come on, we say, I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord. Today, because you care for me, and such a special way, that's why I praise you, I lift you up, and I magnify your name. Yeah. Why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, church, you sing that at home. Say, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you care for me. 
can such a special way that's why I praise you I lift you up and I magnify your name yeah. that's why my heart is filled with praise we sing my heart my mind my soul belongs to you oh you pay the price for me way back on Calvary that's why I praise you I lift you up and I magnify your name oh that's why
we are grateful to God for truly he's good. Tonight, if you would, I'd like to share with you in the ongoing series of teachings that I'm making an effort. Hopefully, I'm not boring you too bad uh, with these teachings and trying to enlighten the people of God on uh, the intimacy of the Old Testament uh, experiences and God and they knew him in different capacities and as a result thought it'd be fitting to share with you some of the capacities that God is known to those uh, who make this biblical story become a reality for us and we too can know him in the same fashion of course through Jesus Christ more importantly seeing him in operation even in the Old Testament. So if you would tonight, I'd like to share with you this uh, facet of God, Jehovah Sidkenu. Jehovah Sidkenu. This word has a T. The uh, T is silent. It is T-S-I-D-K-E-N-U. T-S-I-D-K-E-N-U. In fact, it is uh, Sitkanu, Jehovah, God, Sitkanu, Jehovah Sitkanu, He, the Lord, our righteousness. And please note that uh, that these uh, lessons are, are researched and uh, looked after to bring about some clarity to the people of God, so that there can be some understanding. Jehovah Sitkanu, if you would. Uh, uh, he is found in the book of Jeremiah, chapter uh, 23, at about 6. The B part goes on and introduces him as such. It says, in his days Judah shall be saved, at verse 6 of 23, and Israel shall dwell safely. And This is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Again, he is Jehovah Sitkanu. He is uh, found in Jeremiah 23 at about verse 6 and uh, you can also go into uh, the psalmist picks up at 38 and verse 4 and declares Psalm 38 verse 4 I'll read if you'll write it he goes on and says for mine iniquities are gone over mine head as in heavy burden they are too heavy for me the psalmist describing the elements of sin in fact sinfulness going to the extreme to express that my sins are so heavy that I cannot carry them on my own. So one of the things that uh, comes to mind when trying to deliver a message of this nature is that whenever you feel guilty about your faults and your failures, whenever you're feeling guilty about something that you may have done in life, something that is plaguing you, maybe you have a thorn in your flesh, maybe you have something going on that you are struggling with, and when you're feeling guilty, you need to know uh, God by the name uh, Jehovah Sidkenu. In fact, I, I submit to you tonight that these two elements that I want to lift up this evening will better help us to have a caption of God, a caption of he being God, our righteousness. He's the Lord, our righteousness. He is our righteousness. So it must be understood that there's nothing good about you. There's nothing good about me. It's nothing good in us. God is our righteousness. So uh, the very first thing in understanding this and uh, becoming more intimate with Jehovah Sidkenu is that we must, first of all, uh, repent of our sin. Come on, if you write that down someplace, we've got to repent of our sin. We must do that because when you look at it during the time of Jeremiah at chapter 2, I'd like you to read it in its entirety. Uh, during the time of Jeremiah, the kingdom of Judah was in moral and spiritual decline. I know that many of us have read the story because more than a century earlier, the 10 tribes of the northern kingdom of Israel had been taken into Assyrian captivity. Jeremiah's ministry takes place during the last 40 years of the southern kingdom of Judah's existence. In fact, this period is characterized by immorality, political corruption, and the worship of pagan gods, particularly uh, that pagan god Baal. You do remember, don't you? Therefore, God goes to uh, provide some uh, uh, relief and information to the uh, the people of uh, uh, this season. He says that 
Uh, Jeremiah 2 and 20, he says, for, old, for of old time I have broken the yoke, or thy yoke, and burst thy bands. Thy said I will not transgress, when upon every high hill and under every green tree thou wanderest playing the harlot. In other words, he comes to the extreme to describe this people just as we are today. And I need you to understand that there's no good church, there's no perfect church. In fact, if you're looking for one, you need to stop your search immediately because there's no uh, uh, perfect place. The people were acting like spiritual prostitutes because they were being unfaithful to God by worshiping other gods. And if you have a problem understanding that today, there are many people who wonder right now, why is the church closed? They want to come to church extremely bad. However, it must be understood that your worship was at the mall before time, and now that the church is closed, we want to try to give him some time. Come on, say amen. Uh, before time, there were elements that we worshiped, that we uh, devoted our time to, and now that we cannot uh, uh, focus on uh, this regular routine, many people don't realize that the routine without relationship is worthless. That routine without relationship is worthless. In fact, uh, this is much like our country today, where the fastest growing religion is Islam. Watch this. And cults are booming, especially in uh, the uh, age group with uh, 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 the uh, current generation. You want to call them Generation X or whatever the case may be. Uh, the millennial group, they are uh, running to uh, outside gods, if you please, like ancient Judah. We also worship many other gods, such as pleasure. Come on, say amen. Money, come on, say amen. Sex, oh God, help us all. Say amen, somebody, will you? Because uh, God sends Jeremiah to the palace of Shalom, Shalom, if you please, the king of Judah, to call the nation to repentance. When you look at it between Jeremiah 21, uh, verses 1 and 11, you'll discover that Shalom was also known as Jehoaz. Is the, he's also the son of Josiah and one of Judah's greatest and most faithful kings because he turned to the Lord with all his soul, his heart, and his strength. And you'll discover that at 2 Kings 23, 25, if you'll please write it. And having great uh, Christian parents does not cause God to overlook or excuse our sins. We've got to do our own repenting. Your grandmother's prayers cannot so solidify your relationship with God. You must repent for yourself. You cannot uh, depend on somebody else's relationship. Although we have intercession as an element that we use to connect with God, it is important to understand that repentance from the mouth of those who are going to connect with God for themselves is necessary. And you must understand it actually makes our sin worse because we know better. Come on, say amen. Therefore, when you look at it, you, you'll see if, uh, therefore, if King Shalom uh, uh, doesn't lead Judah to national repentance, God goes on in Jeremiah 22 and 5 and presents to them. He says, but if you will not hear these words, I swear by myself, says the Lord, that this house shall become a desolation. He says it again. If you will not hear these words, and that's what I submit to you today, that so many people for so many years have neglected to hear the voice of God. And as a result, many can blame whoever you want to blame. You can blame the White House. You can blame whoever you want to blame. But I submit to you tonight that God is in total control and he has a providential plan. And even then, when he allowed the, the troubles and trials of this people to come and to come into fruition, you must realize and recognize that God always had a plan for their deliverance. But he also provided them grace and mercy by allowing his words to come to his people. So I challenge you this evening to understand that this means if the king of Judah does not lead them to the palace, the palace will be destroyed by those Babylonian invaders. In fact, Jeremiah is going to the extreme. In fact, he had already uh, expressed this in chapter 19, I believe, in chapter 15. He had also already provided warning between uh, those chapters as he had come on the scene, declaring to them that God wants us to repent. And then you see chapters later, he's still declaring that the voice of God is strongly expressing that, listen, uh, if you do not move by God's command, Jeremiah 22:25 goes on and says, and I will give thee 
into the hand of them that seek thy life, and into the hand of them whose face thou fearest, even into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hands of the Chaldeans. Saints of God, I, I challenge you tonight because Jeremiah also tells the king he's going to die in captivity and never see uh, Judah again. Look at it in Ju uh, Jeremiah chapter 22 and verse 12. He says, but he shall die in the place whether they have led him captive and they shall or rather and shall see this land no more. He tells him that you're going to die there if uh, the people do not give what they need. Nothing can save the nation except turning to God in repentance, which the king and the nation, there it is, refuse to do. Can I help y'all tonight? If this nation, if this nation under God, uh, 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 so-called indivisible, listen, uh, uh, would uh, come together uh, for real and uh, turn back to God and be in uh, with one voice to declare that we have wronged God. We have done wrong in the sight of God. Not only that, but we need to give God our hearts. If we would turn back to God as a nation, uh, this is not some this is not some outside appearance. This is not some outside show because many people can say they love God and still call you out of your name. Uh, there are people who can still uh, uh, can say that they love God and have spiritual and evil pre uh, prejudice in their hearts. It's an impossibility. If this nation would turn back to God and simply say, God, we repent. We know that we have not done right by you. We know that we have not done the things that you've requested of us. I submit that God is going to answer us. However, if we fail to do what God is requiring of us, just as he did in this land and in this nation at this particular time. I see it with the greatest clarity that could have ever been seen because we are all living in captivity. If you doubt my statement, we're living in captivity. You cannot go to a restaurant and sit in tranquility as you would previously. You cannot visit the doctor's office as you would in a regular um, uh, environment. You cannot go to school as you would. You cannot go to work like you used to. In fact, everybody is confined to mask. Everybody is confined to certain distance uh, between each other as a result of what we're experiencing. Saints of God, I submit tonight that we are too, we're captive in God's providential plan to get the people of God to repent and turn back to him. Somebody ought to help me because we're in that place. Judah's spiritual leaders were also involved in the national spiritual prostitution because uh, God goes to the extreme to describe, watch this, uh, in uh, Jeremiah 23 and, and verse 1, he says, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor, said the Lord. Did you get that? He says, they destroy and uh, scatter my sheep. Are you with me here? That word woe is a lamentation that includes a warning of chastisement. Pastors refers to the priests and prophets who are leading the people away from God into idolatry and sexual immorality. Are you with me here? Leading them into idolatry and sexual immorality because of this gross uh, um, uh, uh, dereliction of uh, dereliction, if you will, of duty. Watch this. Uh, God declares that he's going to punish them for every evil that they've done. Now, saints of God, I submit to you that if you have a bad pastor, a bad leader, it is not your job to chastise. I'll say that again. I want to write that down. Write that down someplace. If you have a bad leader, if that leader is not doing what thus said the Lord, it is not your task to chastise. I need you to write that down. I said, if you have a bad leader, one that God has designated and delegated, if he comes in the name of God and he or she is not doing what he or she is supposed to do, it is not your place to chastise. I'll say it one more time. If you have somebody that you're not pleased with, you don't like, and all of the above, there's a difference. I'm trying to make you understand. If you have a leader that is not doing what thus said the Lord, you then, watch this, need understand that you have no right to chastise because if you do, you will find yourself in a very difficult position because the Bible clearly says, I will. Come on, say amen. 
He says, I will deal with them at uh, uh, 23 and 2. He says, therefore, thus says the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Watch this. You have scattered my flock. Are you with me here? And driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, said the Lord. God says, I'm going to do the chastising. I do not need your assistance. Say amen, somebody. So he goes on in contrast to the unfaithful spiritual leaders. God says he will raise up, raise unto David a righteous branch and a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Look at it at 23 and 5. The new king will save Judah and Israel, which refers to all of God's people. Come on, say amen to that. And then he goes on and says, then uh, through Jeremiah, God says at uh, Jeremiah 23 and 6, he goes on and says again, in the days of Judah, watch this, in his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord. Come on, the God of our righteousness. Can I help you? No man could fix what was broken. No man could turn around the desolation that the world was currently experiencing. I don't care who you elect as president. I don't care who you put in the Supreme Court. I could care less who operates and controls the Senate. I don't care who's controlling and operating Congress. If this nation repents, God will allow his power to manifest in all of our lives. Come on. Jesus Christ is currently in the earth realm. He has been all already he's done the work on the cross and as a result of that if we his people would simply receive what jesus christ did on the cross we can experience the freedom of god glory be to his name glory be to his name so in hebrew the lord of our righteousness is jehovah sidkenu this name means the lord is the author of our righteousness in the new testament we will learn uh, uh this is a reference to the coming of Jesus Christ. Are you with me here? That's why we read this truth over in Romans 3.22. You'll see it. He goes on and says, even the righteous of God or the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all upon all. Uh, uh, and uh, I'm sorry, unto all and upon all that be that believe all them that believe for there is no difference. So in other words, he says, Anybody who believes in Jesus Christ can experience the power of his divine and magnificent, come on, righteousness. Can you say amen to that? So in the New Testament, when the word believe refers, uh, when the word re uh, believe refers to believing in Jesus, it always implies repenting of, are you with me? Or turning from our sins. Come on, say amen to that. And that word believe also means we believe in Jesus to the degree that we commit our lives to him. And when he describes his ministry to the Jews and the Greeks, Paul goes on and says at Acts 20 and 21, watch this, if you see it, he goes on and he declares, uh, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, say amen to that. So the message of the gospel is simple. Turn from sin and turn to God. Now, many people will suggest and submit, well, you know, I'm not a sinner because I don't fornicate. I'm not a sinner because I don't commit adultery. But I'm here to tell you that there are some sins even greater than adultery and fornication, things that are not seen, things that don't smell like liquors, things that don't smell like weed. Come on. Things that, that are not so obvious. There are some sins that people have in their hearts, harnessing uh, hate, uh, or being divisive in the church or wherever, sowing the seeds of discord constantly in other folks' business, uh, tail bearers. Y'all gonna help me here. There are all types of sin, those sins that are seen, those sins are obvious. However, those things that are not seen and those things that are implanted in our heart that go against God need to be identified in our lives. And the only way we can see the freedom of God is that we repent and recognize that we are sinners. Hey, there there's something with all uh, there's some wrong with all of us. Come on, write that down someplace. Because so many people have forgotten that. They become so holy. They come to church every Sunday. Well, you can't come every Sunday now. Are you still who you say you are? You can't come to church. You can't put your church clothes on. Do you still love God? 
Hey, it's not about all of the elements of routine, but when you have a relationship, it don't matter if you come with your shorts on. You can come in here, y'all, I almost said something. You can come in here with your socks on. It really don't matter if you have a relationship with God. God will allow your power and the presence of his divine plan to manifest in your life. Can you say amen to that? So, so first of all, watch this. We've got to repent of our sin. Say, repent of our sin. When you feel guilty, just repent of your sin. Come on, say amen to that. And then you got to realize that, listen, sometimes you'll feel guilty. Because some of the things that we do in our lives are not so pleasurable. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. I'm not the only one that has moments in my life where I know that I need to repent and change my ways. Redirect my attitude. Say amen. Sometimes I say things I shouldn't say. When y'all going to say amen? Huh? Say things we shouldn't say, do things we shouldn't do. But then secondly, watch this. Here's, here's one of the greater portions of this, and I'll be done. Watch this. When you repent of your sin, secondly, you've got to receive God's forgiveness and cleansing. That's one of the greater problems. Many times we repent, but guess what? We do not receive what God gives. Hallelujah. See, when you're too busy into people, when you allow people, when you've employed people to validate your life, that's when you'll find yourself in a place where you cannot receive the power and the presence of God's divine righteousness in your life because you're waiting on somebody to tell you you did a good job. You're waiting on somebody to pat you on the back. And the reality is, is that you don't need the validation of man. Say amen, somebody, will you? We are all sinners, and there's nothing we can do to make ourselves righteous. We must admit this truth to God when we become righteous and get rid of our guilt. Because Isaiah 64 and about verse 6 says, But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness. Look at what he says. Now, I did not make this up. I did not make this. All our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Are you with me here? When we carry a burden of guilt because of sin, we feel spiritually polluted and dirty. That is when we need to know that God, as Jehovah Sidkenu, we need to know him as Jehovah Sidkenu, and after David, uh, had sinned. Watch this. After David had sinned. Watch this. I said after David had sinned, he felt dirty. Come on, say amen. Have you ever felt dirty? Come on. I, I mean, have you really ever felt dirty? And he was guilty of adultery. He had killed a man and he uh, deceiving Bathsheba into marrying her husband's killer. Are you with me here? And later, David, if you please, finds himself overwhelmed with guilt and now he's going down on his knees and he says, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Man, listen, when you talk to God, you do not have to receive the validation of anybody else because when God cleans you, I'm telling you, you're clean. Come on, say amen to that. I say when God cleans you and releases you, you're clean. So David knows when he prays. That prayer of repentance, he will receive God's forgiveness and his cleansing. Are you with me here? So he prays, if you well, further, he says, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow at 51 and 7. And then to understand what David means, watch this. We need to understand that word hyssop. Come on, say hyssop. That word hyssop was a small shrub used as a brush. And uh, let's again use our, our old friend, the rule of first mention, because the word hyssop is first mentioned in the Bible at the first Passover as the Israelites prepare to leave Egypt. God then tells them to take the blood of a lamb without blemish and put it in a basin. Watch this. And when he goes to declare that in Exodus 12 and 22, he says, take that bunch of hyssop, take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the entail and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until the morning. Come on, say amen to that. And if you were to do that, you will probably put the blood in the center of the top of the door and then about the shoulder, about shoulder high on each doorpost or side, making the pattern of a cross. Somebody say, help us, Lord Jesus. The blood saved the life of the firstborn of every obedient family. I'll say that again. 
the blood uh, saved the life of every firstborn of every obedient. Fa- I'll say it again. The blood saved the life of every uh, uh, the, uh, of the firstborn of every obedient family. And, and watch this. When the when, when the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land, Exodus 20, uh, 12 and 29, David understood this. He knew that when he prayed, purge me with hyssop, he meant cleanse me with the blood of an innocent victim that has died. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Jesus has yet to die on the cross. However, David had to trust in the blood of a spotless lamb that represented the blood of Jesus. Hey, he had to trust in that blood, man. I'm so glad that Jesus always has a plan. So he had a substitute. He had an element, if you please, that operated until he was uh, there to declare the real uh, 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 element or avenue, the bridge of salvific uh, uh, expression. He says, I want you to use this uh, innocent lamb. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Spotless lamb. We can, when we confess our sins, we receive forgiveness and cleansing. So we don't have to feel dirty. Come on, say amen to that. You do not have to feel dirty. You don't have to feel guilty anymore. In fact, if you look at it, 1 John 1, 7 goes on and says, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Come on, say amen to that. And when we confess our sins, I'm here to tell you, I say when we confess our sin, God and uh, to God and receive his cleansing and forgiveness. The promise is, is that Jesus's blood cleanses us of not just some part or most, but all of our sins. Come on, say amen to that. All of our sins. And you got to realize it includes many. It, it, it includes many things. Does it include adultery? Yep. Does it include every single sin? Yep. Does it include abortion? Yep. Does it include a divorce, a guilty party in divorce? Yep. Come on, somebody say it's cleansed, it's, it's fixed. And it's only when you and it's only when we know God through Christ as Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord our righteousness, that we can get rid of our guilt. And one thing you must realize is 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 picks it up for us. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold. All things become new. I'll say it again. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Saints of God, I challenge you today to understand this because when you're operating in the kingdom of God, you've got to make for certain that you're not living and walking in guilt and allowing the enemy to continue to plague your mind to believe that you cannot make it to your next destination. So therefore, you need to know God as Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord of our righteousness or the Lord our righteousness, and we must repent of our sins. And then secondly, watch this. We've got to receive God's forgiveness and cleansing. Come on, say amen to that, will you? So our God is strong and he's mighty, he's big, uh, and he does things well. And as a result of that, we must trust in him and uh, know that... um, that he gives us what we need. I don't need this. Give me A flat. The blood that Jesus shed for me. Way back on the blood that gives me strength from day day to day it will never it will never lose it will never lose its power It soothes my doubts and it calms my fears and dries up 
for him, but I tell you, far crowd won't be no more trouble and exchange. Anybody gonna change it? One of these old days, one of these old days, I'm going to exchange it here. Someday, for a crown, hey, for a crown, can I get a witness? I'm gonna change it someday. One of these old days, for a crown, for a crown, for a crown, I'm gonna change it someday. Someday, for a crown, one of these old days, ain't no doubt in my mind, I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna exchange it. For a crown, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all, excuse me. Thank you, Jesus. One of these old days, I'm gonna change it someday. One of these old days. One of these old days, one of these old days, I'm gonna change it someday for, for a crown. Oh yeah, listen, if you want to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior tonight, you can know him. No matter what you're going through, whatever your challenges are, if you got issues, whatever it is, some fleshly issue, some mental issue, physical issue, you can know Jesus tonight. The blood of Jesus still works. Regardless of what you've been through, he can heal you. He can deliver you. He can give you peace again. In fact, he can make a way right now. I trust him to make a way for you right now. If you'll just trust him this evening, if you're online with us, you can declare that I want to know him. If you're here today, you can get to know him today. He'll give you what you need. He does not need anybody's permission but yours in order to come into your life. So you can come to him tonight and he will save you. He'll free you. He'll make you right. Because he is Jehovah Sid Canoe, the God our righteousness. And I love him tonight. I appreciate him. Thank you so much for joining us. And we appreciate you. We'll be having the outside service uh, Sunday. Outside service. So if you would please join us for the outside service. Bring your chairs as you have in the past. Hopefully it's warm enough for you to get out of your cars and to come and share with us on Sunday. Sunday school will be done on uh, uh, Ring Central this weekend. So uh, we're looking forward to uh, some special events, if you'll just listen out. Um, I'm going to try to be done by 11.30 because i got to go over to uh, First Baptist. If y'all can go with me, okay? i go at 11.30 if y'all can go with me. At uh, First Baptist, uh, what's it called? Ridgewood Heights, yeah, 11.30. We'll go to service with them, and uh, I'll try to do my very best to be done at 11.30 on Sunday here at Mount Ena. Our youth have been in charge and they've been doing a magnificent job. Please don't forget to uh, come for your flu shots tomorrow starting I believe at 11 o'clock a.m. I'm not exactly certain what time it's going to shut off but just call in the morning if you had made arrangements to uh, do your flu shots tomorrow and uh, thank you for those of you who supported the uh, Walker family. Sister Martha Walker had a very blessed uh, home going celebration today and we thank God for all of you for being in your places so we love you and appreciate you thank you so much and we um, are looking forward to seeing you guys tomorrow and uh, the other days and we give great great honor to Justice Ruth Bader 
uh, Ginsburg as she's being disrespected by those in high office uh, by failing to at least honor her legacy before trying to go to the extreme to replace her. Say amen. We need to provide some sense of honor, and we're going to do that at the Mount Union Church. You look out for that coming this week. And we're going to do uh, get out to vote and make sure that everybody is registered. Everybody is 18 at your house. Make sure that you get them registered to vote. Uh, so that we can uh, do what we need to do in November. In fact, we're going to do it in October. October 6th is the last day to uh, register for voting, and we need to get that done ASAP. We've got to do it right away. All right, so uh, remember your meetings and things of that nature that you have set, and hopefully I'm not forgetting anything. All right, so if, if perhaps just look on the website. I think that they're uh, lifting that up and uh, keeping it uh up to date okay so thank you for joining us this evening we love all of you a flat for me please god be with you oh god god be with you Until we meet again, oh God, God be with you, God, God be with you, God. Until we meet again. Now may the grace of God Sweet communion of the Holy Spirit Rest, rule and abide With each of us now henceforth and forevermore Let's sing it together will you Amen Amen Oh. Uh -huh.